dead. In the grave. And you, an angel, decorating my graveside with flowers. Good morning, boss. I feel like I'm dead and lying in the grave. Especially with all the flowers you put around me. I wanted you to wake up to beauty. Or would you rather take them away? I thought you would like the flowers. They decorate the earth. A renewal of faith in life and hope on earth. Life. Earth. How much longer have I got to be here? The doctor said you won't die. For now. He said we were lucky to get you here on time after you went unconscious in front of the office. You gave all of us at the office quite a scare. I'm sure you all are used to it by now. Having a CEO with a bad heart. A dying heart. I could die any day, you know. The doctor says there is hope. Sooner or later, I don't know what will turn up. Kate, you've been talking to my doctor too much. What are you supposed to be? My secretary or my mother? Your secretary, sir. A secretary who loves you as if you are her own brother. How soon can I talk to my doctor? That was careless of you, Bob. A whole three weeks and you didn't show up for checkup? Tell me what would have happened to you if you passed out while driving or alone in your house and there was no one to bring you to the hospital. Tell me. I would have died. What else? I'm not afraid anymore. First it was checkup every nine months. Then downwards to every three weeks. I'm dying, am I not? You're not dying, Bob. You're not dying. Soon we shall find a heart for you that matches with yours. I've put advertisements on the internet, tabloid, what have you. Soon we shall get a donor for you. You just have to have hope. And if we do not find a donor, Then gradually, my checkup intervals would dwindle to once every week. Then once every three days. And then daily. I will begin to live on life support machines until the hour comes. days of my life are running out like, like sand through the hourglass. I have no family to mourn me. Only my rabbit. And Kate and Cecilia, my two employees who, who love me like my own blood. You know, It's a lonely life being a millionaire. It's even worse dying a millionaire. You never know who cries for you, who cries for the money. Then you're dead. You never know. Uh, 
Good afternoon, beautiful lady. Good afternoon. And you see, I usually don't stop to talk to strangers, okay? But you look quite harmless. How may I help you? Uh, I'm actually looking for a home for my rabbit here. Do you keep pets? Sorry, sorry to bother you. I'll be traveling to a very far place and I, I need someone who can take care of him when I'm gone. <laughs> then why don't you sell it off then? I mean, why would you bother so much over a rabbit? Madam, please, you look rich. I, I know you can spare him a little space and food in your house, please. <laughs> Oh my god, I can't believe I've been stopped here to discuss the well-being of a beast. Madam, my rabbit is not a beast. <laughs> well, an animal then. His name is Tony. T-O-N-I-E. I named him after my late twin brother. The only family I ever had. Um, I'm very sorry I couldn't help you, okay? Sorry about that. An old couple who live down the road and they are into cats, dogs, kittens and all of okay. that. So I'm sure they can give you a place for your rabbit. So why don't you just drive behind me? I'll take you there. All right. Okay? All right. Let's go. You'll be all right here. I'll feed you. You know, the way you and I started off on the road, I, I never would have guessed you would wait this long for me. Well, you know I had to stick around to know whether the old folk was going to give your rabbit a place to Oh. Oh, you're good. You're good. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love that. Yeah, oh, Tony, don't Tony, don't do that. You're, you're actually kinder than you show. Why do you hide yourself behind a mask of hardness? You know, you're full of First of all, this morning you came up to my place. Which is out of the blues. Well, that is so strange, you know that. But I find you fascinating. So tell me, <laughs> how did you know my house? Who showed uh, you? Okay, what about this? Can we have dinner at your place? <laughs> uh, sorry, sorry, sorry about that. My place. My place. <laughs> I live alone. No, just answer the question. Go on. All right. Who showed you my house? Okay. Uh, the the couple who, whom I gave my rabbit. Yeah, you told me they live in your neighborhood, right? Good, that was a clue. <laughs> so all I had to do was go to the neighborhood and ask questions, and, I see. and that was it. Very smart. Thank you. So dinner at my place. <laughs> I'll take that for a yes. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, sir. Hey, good morning. How are you? Good. We are all excited this morning. Have we struck good fortune? Have we finally found a donor? Uh, well, no. We haven't found a donor yet, but I found reason to renew my, my, my willpower to live. 
and not to give in to the pulls of my weak heart and die. Kate. So? I think I've finally found a girl to love me. <laughs> Come on. I won't spend my money, 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 Okay, close your eyes. Close your eyes. Hey, hey, whoa, whoa. No smart moves. All right? No smart moves. Okay? Yeah. Uh, hey, 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 no smart moves, no smart moves. Okay. Okay. Can I open them now? No, wait. Okay. All right, you can go look for it now. Okay. Okay, I actually hit it there. Hey, whoa, 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 wait. Okay, all right. Come back, come back. Come Are back. you let serious? Me come back, let me show you. <laughs> show me. Okay, slow down. Slow, slow, show slow. Me. Give me a kiss, then I'll show you. If you don't give me a kiss, I won't show you. All right. Mm. Hurry, All right. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> to me, you're such a naughty boy. <laughs> Let me see. Okay, uh. Mr. Bob? Yeah. I know it's none of my business, sir. But too much hanging out with that Angela girl is beginning to wear you out. It's too much stress on your heart. She makes me happy. It's not good for your heart. <sighs> Kate, happiness is good for me. You are jumping all over town with her, and you are not resting. I think your doctor will complain when he gets to know. Well, he won't get to know. You know why? Because neither I, nor you, or Cecilia will betray me as I catch a little fun before I die. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe I may even live a little longer now that I'm happy and in love. And fatigued? and dozing off as a result of that. Oh, Kate, please, stop being sarcastic. All right, have you got something you came to tell me? No, no, sir. I was wondering why you didn't go for lunch, sir. And I became more worried when no sound came out of your office. I thought that you... You were... thought I had passed out again? No. I was just worried, sir. We don't want you to die, sir. You are a good boss and a good man. Don't worry, Kate. I've found someone I can live my life for now. And I'm also not in a hurry to die. So, get back. Okay, Don't worry, I'm fine. Join me in the pool. It's warm. No, no, I don't swim. <laughs> you don't swim. Is it that you can't swim or you don't swim? Oh, please. 
Of course I can swim, huh? I don't, I just don't want to swim now. Okay, so prove it. <laughs> wait, wait, Angela, hold on a second. Are you daring me? Yes, I dare you to jump into the pool. <laughs> so you think I can't swim? <laughs> prove it! All right, no, all right. Prove it. All right, fine, I'll prove it to you. You actually daring me, right? All right, cool. I will show you I can freaking swim. Okay, I'm waiting, prove it. <laughs> no, no, wait, prove relax, it. relax. Prove it, prove it. Okay. Okay, now you know what? I want you to race to that end and come back. All right, so let's race. No, 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 let, let, let's race. Wait, no, wait, 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 wait. Let, let's race together. No, you race. So you actually brought me here to do this, all right? <laughs> Don't worry, Angela. Mr. Bob is a survivor. He has made it so many times before, and he'll make it this time around. The swimming was too much exertion for his heart, and the cold water wasn't of much help either. You mean Bob has a problem with his heart? For Christ's sake, tell me! I'm his girlfriend, I deserve to know! What is going on? He never told you about his heart? No. What is wrong with his heart? Don't worry, I'm sure he will tell you as soon as he's out of hospital himself. wrong with you or I'll walk out of that door and never come back again. Angela, this, this is no time for this, please. Bob, then when is the right time to tell a girl you've been dating for weeks that you have a messed up heart? Bob, 
I'm gonna ask you for the last time. What is wrong with your heart? Actually, you're right. I have a messed up heart. But it, it's not so messed up anymore. Because I, I have you right now in my life. It's, it's, it's not. It's... Do you? My heart is bad. Very, very bad. I need an urgent transplant. I, I gave out Tony my rabbit because there will be nobody to take care of him when I'm gone. And so far we've not been able to find someone who can donate a heart for me. So tell me Bobby, where do I come into all of this? Why do you want me in your life? How could you do this to me? Why do you want me to love you when you know you're not going to live? Bobby, why? Because with you, I don't feel like dying anymore. I don't. Loving you has given me life. Loving you has given me faith. I don't want to discuss death in the presence of love. Angela, please. Please stay with me. Stay in my life. Angela, I, I need a hand to hold when I go. I need love. I need love to smile for me as I go. I need love to cry for me when I'm gone. Angela, please. Please, please. Oh, yeah. Angela, please. No. Angela, please. From me now, love or pity? Bob, if I tell you that I can love you wholeheartedly now, when I know that loving you will only break my heart. Because I know that you wouldn't be there for me always. Then I'll be lying. Angela, I may live. I may survive. There is still something called hope. There's still something called faith. God, Angela, God is still in heaven. Miracles still happen. Angela. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I can't continue. I'm sorry. You see, I won't be happy living in a paradise made of wax which can melt in the heat of the sun.
Hello. Hi. I don't like you. I never liked you. Right from the day Bob introduced you to me as the love of his life and the reason for his wood will to stay alive, I knew you were not good for him. Am I making myself clear enough? No, go on. I appreciate fun talk. I like blunt people. <laughs> Angela, do you have feelings at all? Do you? Well, I've killed my feelings for Bob, if that's what you mean. Okay, I'm a very realistic person. His feelings for you do not count. Should they? Thank you very much, Angela. You've made yourself clear enough. Okay, then why don't you tell Bob to marry me? What? Yeah. He should give this relationship some legitimacy. Okay, he's going to die. And when he goes, I need something to lean on for giving him emotional solace. So he can tell him to, you know, wed me in a court or in the church. Name the place and I'll be ready. Oh, you have eyes on his wealth. What is wrong with being a rich widow? Tell me. Okay, listen. This just work this between the two of us. Bob shouldn't know anything. Okay, I get paid when he dies and I inherit 80% of his wealth and estate. Never. Never, Angela. That will not happen. Not in this life. Yourself. If you have a dead relative, friend, or know of anyone at all whose heart is preserved in an organ bag, please have a heart and save Mr. Bob Odogu's life. You can reach out to us at our office and we shall reach his daughter. Mr. Bob, it's been my pleasure having you on the program. Thank you. It's me, Albert Aguirre on saving lives. See you sometime next week. When you say, say, say that you love me, love me, 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 oh me, 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 oh me, 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 oh, let me see you twist like a snake and in love, show me how you Hello, good day. Dr. Jones Hilton Specialist Hospital. How may I help you? Oh! Oh my God! Yes! Man, this is good news! Right? Okay, thank you very much, man. You just made my day. Just, you just made my day, man. I'm very grateful. I'll, I'll be in touch with you. I'll be in touch with you. Thanks, man.
It's okay now. They have found the donor. Oh God, thank you. Jesus. Thank you, Father. Lord, may your name be praised. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Donor requested that her identity be left private. She said that the hat belonged to her late husband who died in an accident. Uh, the donor is a woman then? Yes, Mr. Bob. A widow. Like I told you, her husband who died in a, in a car accident requested that his hat be preserved in an organ bank. The good news is we've checked the hat and it matches. So surgery commence almost immediately. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Doctor. So, when precisely? Um, let me see. Well, this weekend, Friday. <sighs> Why are you showing me all these pictures? Uh, who's this man? You do not remember him. He does look a bit familiar, but I don't know him. Should I? You're not good with faces out there. Well, I've had a lot of things on my mind. But, but just tell me, who is he? That's Mr. Bob, the man whose life you saved. The same one you gave your heart. Where this taken before or after the surgery? They were taken after the surgery. I see. So the surgery was successful then. Thank God. I'm, I'm glad I was of some help to him. Yeah. Since his recovery, he has been clamoring to know the identity of the kind widow who donated her late husband's heart to him. No, I made it clear from the beginning that I, I didn't want to be known or thanked. Yes, I know. We also told him all this. His doctor and I. So why are we still talking about this? He has scheduled for a party to be held on Saturday to celebrate his new life. He wishes you to be there, at least to see him happy, held and happy. To see the good result of what you have done for him. That's the only way he feels he can thank you and extend his joy to you. Since you've decided never to be thanked or identified either. Look, if I go to that party, he will know. No, he will not. There will be a crowd. Friends. Friends of friends, acquaintances of acquaintances. I mean, you'll just be another face in the crowd. Nobody will know who is who. But he will be sure that you're there and see him happy. Please, I think that'll be good enough for him. Look, I just want to be left alone. I, I, I don't want any part of this. Please, can, could you just respect that, please? Sure. Here. In case you do have a change of mind, that's the party invitation card. I'll just avail you date and time. Have a lovely day. Thank you.
I'm so lonely, Ken. I'm so alone in this world. Since you... Since you died. And now another man has your heart. Sometimes I feel so terrible about it. But it was your wish that it be given out to save another's life. So typical of you to want to help others, even in death. I miss you so much, Ken. I really miss you. So much. So much. I miss you so much. I mean, oh, what kind of woman brings joy and refuses to see joy? I, I, I can't understand it. That's life for you, Mr. Bob. People differ. Not everyone will want to be celebrated for the good he or she has done. Look, doctor, you must tell me who she is. I will go to her house and beg her to accept some gratitude from me. I can't disclose her identity to you. She requested it, it be kept private. knows that since the last time I saw you, all I've been doing is to pray and pray for you day and night. Oh, really? Alright. Go ahead and lie to me. I'm all ears. Go ahead, go ahead. I'm all ears. Hey, hey, hey! Don't you dare touch me. Heart. Well, then that's good. It means you're falling in love with me again. What is this? 
Bob, wait! Bob, why did you run away from me just like that? Bob, is everything all right? Hey, hey, hey! Stay away from me. Just, just stay out. You left me before, right? Just stay the hell out of my life. Stay out. <laughs> Describe the, the lady who saved my life. What does she look like? That I can't do. How wish? Oh, Beth, cut that crap! All right, all right. I'll give you ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand dollars right now. Cash. Just describe her. She's fair in complexion. Not too tall. Not too fat. Has sad eyes. She's beautiful, and her name is Brianna. Wait. I've seen her. Excuse me? Yes. I've seen her, I've seen her. The, the lady who saved my life. She was here. When? Look, Bath, another $10,000, please. Another $10,000. Tell me where she lives. Honestly, Bob, it is against the end. <sighs> Honestly, Bath, this is my life. This is my life. I need to see her right now. A lot, I don't know, a, a lot of strange things are happening to me right now that I cannot explain, but I need see her right now. If I don't do that, I'm not going to be happy ever again. Please. She lives on Wickinson Road. You have to find out the house yourself. I've only been there twice and I never put her chicken on the number. But don't do this, please. Don't do this right now. You, you just have to take me there. No, I can't. What happens when she sees me with you or finds out I told you? She will definitely lose confidence in me and the media. I mean, she can even sue me. Bob, I can't do it. I'm sorry. Bob. I don't want twenty thousand dollars.
Hey, madam. Sorry to bother you. Good morning. Ah, good morning. Uh, I'm looking for a lady. Her name is Brianna. She lives on the street. She's uh, fair and she's very pretty. Sorry. I don't know anybody who fits such description. She has this peculiar, sad look in her eyes. Sir, I don't go looking into people's eyes. I'm sorry. Madam, she lives somewhere on the street. She, she... From at this time of the night. I've come to check on you. Make sure you're all right. I'm so lonely, Ken. How can I be all right? You left, you know. It was true, no fault of mine. Why are you smiling? Because I know you're somebody be happy again. No, Ken. There can be no happiness for me without you. But I want you to be happy. Then you won't have to come back to me, Ken. But you died, remember? My heart will find you again. Your heart? Wasn't it your wish that it be donated? How can your heart find me when another man has it? My heart will find you. Ken? What are you doing? Ken? Ken, don't go! Ken, don't you go! Ken! Ken? Ken, no. Ken! Ken, no, come back! your love to save me. You spit on me. I felt the pain. Angela, I almost died. But God, God intervened and saved my life. And now you're back. Angela, now, now you, oh, I don't believe now you're back to tell me that you love me. Oh my fine. Where were you when I needed you? Where? Oh, please, I'm sorry. 
But two wrongs don't make a right. Please forgive me. Okay, and I promise I'll spend the rest of my life making it up to you. I promise. How can I ever love you again? How can I forgive a gold digger? You wanted me to offer you marriage and 80% of my wealth in exchange for your love, right? Angela, get out of my house. I said, get out of my house and stay out because you and I, we don't exist anymore. Get out. Don't you touch me. Get out of my house. Brianna! Brianna, please, please open the gate! Brianna, please open the gate! What do you want? Why are you hounding me? Just, just leave me alone! Go! Listen, I've only come to thank the woman who gave me a heart. I... I mean no harm. Look, no, just, just go away. I don't want to be thanked. It was my husband's wish and I just carried out his wish. Just go, please. Then I beg you in the name of your husband, whose heart I carry right now, please open the gate. Brianna, please open the gate. Let me, let me tell you what a precious heart you've given to me. A heart that beats so fast the very first day I saw you. A heart that is beating very fast, even, even now at, at the sound of your voice. Brianna, please open the gates. My husband died nine months ago in a car crash. So you see, the pain is still very fresh. And that's, that's why I can't come out and mingle with society or be celebrated on TV or thanked by you. You know, I, I just wanted to be left alone to mourn him. My husband was a very good man. My pain is heavy. Very heavy. What was his name? Ken. His name was Ken. Like that. That's him over there. He does look good in that picture. Yes, he does. But you know, for some reason, that that picture has been falling down time and time again. And, and this might sound odd, but Ken has been appearing in my dreams almost every night. But I don't believe in ghosts. So. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow, that's uh, that's 
that's strange. I, I don't believe in ghosts too, but... in both the physical and spiritual realm. Ghosts are earthbound spirits. Mm -hmm. Now the emphasis here is on the word earthbound. So, why are they earthbound? Well, I mean, it could be that a ghost still has like strong attachments with, with an activity or a person that it left behind and, and just probably still hovers around that person. Perfect explanation. I mean, look at this. Ghosts have been reported to be highly reactive to present the environment, bringing messages. Bringing messages. Take note. Warning, harassment, or protection over people. Protection over people. Take note again. And see here, see. Ghosts have been known to move objects. Does that explain why Ken's picture has been falling time and time again? Is he, is he trying to tell me something? Okay, read here. Okay. In the New Testament, Jesus had to persuade the disciples that it's not a ghost following the resurrection. Okay. Meaning, if there was nothing like ghosts, then ghosts did not exist. Jesus would not have told his disciples that. Not a ghost. Okay, see, click here. Mm -hmm. A ghost is said to be the appearance of a deceased person, usually encountered in places he or she frequently visited or in association with or with the person's former belongings. <sighs> you said your husband loved you very much when he was alive. I think he is stuck on you and trying to make sure you're okay. And now that I carry his heart, I think he's trying to hook us up. <laughs> Maybe he thinks I'm good for you. Well, you know? please, just stop, okay? This is not a joke. <laughs> no, no, seriously. Yeah, I, I'm not joking. No. Ghosts or no ghosts, I still would have been so attracted to you. I mean, your beauty, your your simplicity, your humility, I... You know, he Ken came to my dream and he said, I've come to check on you to make sure you're all right. And he also said, I know you'll be happy again soon. And, and I told him, I said, how there, there can be no happiness for me without you. And, he said again, I want you to be happy. And when he said that, I just, I said to him like, then come back. If, if you want me to be happy, then come back. But, but you can't because you're dead. And then he just looked at me with so much love in his eyes. And he said, my heart will find you. Brianna, I will love you. Ghosts or no ghosts, heart or no heart, I will take away the loneliness and make you happy. For our hearts, our hearts have found each other.
Mr. and Mrs. Caleb, I honestly, I, I can't thank you enough for taking care of beautiful Tony while I was away. I hope you are going to continue to take good care of him. Of course, of course. Oh, I'm mine. Bob has gotten a good woman for himself. You see, if he doesn't feed Tony, this woman will. I'm so flattered, sir. You are you not. You me a good woman. You are woman. not, my dear. I'm old, my dear. I know a good woman when I see one. The other day, he came down with one other woman. <laughs> but just me looking at the woman, I found out she was crap. And you know what? My husband didn't even say a word to her. That's how he behaves when he doesn't like someone. Oh, okay. You see, I, I do that. I do that. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. <laughs> okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, oh, I'm happy. I'll give you a bag. <laughs> um, who was the woman you took to the Caleb's house? The one Mr. Caleb said was crap. I've been expecting that question since we left the Caleb's. And you actually waited for the right time to ask. Waited for the right time? What do you mean? Because that's her sitting in the car in front of my gate. Um, who is she? Somebody I need to get off my back. A stalker? Worse than a stalker. A gold digger. Bob, what is wrong with your gate, man? I came here, he told me you were not in. I wanted to wait inside. He said he wasn't going to allow me to. What's happening? And I've been calling your phone. Your phone has been off the whole day. Wait for me here. Bob, wait for you here. And who is that woman you have in your car? Excuse me. You have eyes. Okay, he is my boyfriend. Did you hear me? Bobby! Hey, hey. Yeah, welcome, sir. Don't let her into this compound. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, I Don't. Yes, sir. Bobby! Don't come here. No. I go wound you. Bobby! Where was that thing in your car when, when we fell in love? Where was she? Madam, they're not a shout here. They're not a shout here. So you're treating me you're treating me this way because of that thing? I go wound you. I'm going to shut this shit out right now. No. Wait, wait, wait. Bobby! Do you want to go out there and start yelling like she's doing? What are you talking about? Can, can you hear all the things she's saying? Look, I need to go out there and sort this thing out because anybody who's hearing her shout right now will think she was one good woman and uh, an angel to me, but it's not true. Okay, so what do you want to do? You want to go there, yell, scream and shout and then she will yell even more and then you will yell higher and higher than she's... And, and, then, and then what happens? What? What was that thing in your car when you were fainting all over the place? And I still endured it. Come on, please. Let's let's go inside. Look, look at beautiful Tony here. He has missed you. He's been away for too long. Come, let's just go inside and talk about this, okay? Bobby, you see, I'm not a girl you can use and dump just like that. I'll be back. Rubbish. If you come back here, I go show you. No sir. Bobby, I'll be back. Actually, I dated her while I was sick. She broke my heart. And she left you because she thought you were going to die. And now she's back because you survived, right? Yeah. How did you know? Well, <laughs> I know the normal sequence to stories like this. <sighs> she broke my heart. Not, not this one. The other heart. No woman. Brianna, no woman can break this heart. Except you. 
It was my late husband's heart. I can't hurt him. And me? Come on. You know I won't be here if I had plans to break your heart now, will I? Yeah. I know. Back to this girl. What's her name? Angela. She said, I have a messed up heart. A heart that makes me faint everywhere and, and embarrass her. She said she couldn't love a dying man, except I was ready to pay her for it by marrying her and willing 80% of my earthly possessions to her in the event of my death. She was vicious. Angela was digging for gold on the ground where my grave would be made. She has no heart. No heart. Kill me. Yeah, it's all right. Brianna, it's all right. Please, it's, it's okay. Yeah. I'm here now. All right? You're safe. I'm so scared, Bob. You should have seen the speed at which he drove straight at me like he really wanted to kill me. He wanted to run me over. Brianna, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Brianna, listen. I have to move you out of this house. Please. Move into my house. You'll be safe with me. No, I can't. Please. I'm still mourning Ken. And, and it's not even one year yet. I can't, please. And, you know, somehow I just... I feel 
Ken was there when, when it happened, you know? Like he was he was trying to warn me not to go out, don't go out, you know, because I, I had I had the keys to the gate. I was trying to open the gate and each time I tried, the keys just kept falling down and falling down. But I, I just didn't think anything of it, you know. Pri, listen to me. Your safety is very important to me. I need to keep you out of harm's way. And I know that Ken will want me to do that. Especially because I'm the one who put you in this danger. Why? Why do you say you put me in this danger? Are you Angela? A bad loser? A desperate woman? A she devil? For, for Pete's sake, do I have to go on TV and announce that my feelings for you are over before you accept it and leave me and mine alone? You and yours? Yes. Who is yours? You mean that widow? Listen, Bob, she took my boyfriend. And I wish she never knows peace ever again in her life. But as for trying to kill Brianna, that is out of the question. I've got much more important things to do with my time. You even know her name. Well, I live in this city and I make sure I keep my ears on the ground. Even the grasses in this city know that you and Brianna have become an item ever since you got to know she gave you a heart. And that's why you're trying to kill her, right? Kill her? For what? Bob, I've forgotten all about you. And it wasn't like I was crazy about you or anything. I mean, you've got some bugs. So what's wrong with me trying to have some little fun? Bob, I've moved on with my life. Okay? And it might interest you to know that. I now have a sweet, loving, and caring boyfriend. He's called Albert. Albert! Albert is the biggest TV presenter in this part of West Africa. And you know what? We met on your party. Ah, yeah. oh, Albert, darling. Somebody is trying to kill Brianna, and I know who it is. Kill Brianna? For what? Angela won't take a no from me, lying low. So she hooked up with another boyfriend. Somebody who knows Brianna and knows where she lives. And right now she's using him to do her dirty work. And <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. The poor guy is... He's so lost in love that he can do whatever she wants, including murder. Who is the man? His name is Albert, the TV presenter, the guy that interviewed me on the show when I was sick. The same guy Brianna went to when she wanted to contact me for the heart. And the same guy I sent to Brianna's house to inform her of my survival party. Oh, oh, oh I remember him. Yeah. He and Angela met at my survival party. Angela saw the opportunity and used it to trap his emotions all for her future plans which are manifesting right now. Do you have any proof? Can we go to the police? I don't have any proof. Only logic and deductions. You know, Brianna said it was a man that attacked her, not a woman. And he was wearing a mask. Then move Brianna out of that house. I suggested she moves in with me, but she, she, she wouldn't take that. Then rent another house for her. Keep her out of danger. <laughs> I, I think that's exactly what I'm going to do. You know, I, I never really thought about that. I just hope you know what you are doing. How? Plunging headlong into a relationship with Brianna in so short a time. Is it love? 
Believe me, Kate, it's love. In fact, it's even more than love. Brianna is my life. Well, I've been thinking. And the more I think about it, the more I realize that maybe I should move out of that house. But my husband is in that house. I, f I feel closer to him there. And I know that's what he wants. He wants me to stay there. Well, guess I'll always live under the shadow of Ken and how he wants things or would have wanted to do things. It's not like that. Please try and understand. I just want to be able to mourn Ken for at least one year before I move on to anything if I have to. That's what I want. That's what my heart tells me. Brianna, your heart should be telling you to stay safe more than any other thing it tells you. I am safe in my house. Yes! Stop, stop, where are you going? Stop, no, 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 please! Stop, wait! I know who is behind all of this. Officers, be rest assured I will take this to court. Okay, madam, this is not an arrest. It's just an invitation to the office for a little question based on uh, certain complaint we received. So you don't have to shift. Listen, officers, I'm a well known TV presenter in this country. And you don't respect that? The law is no respecter of persons, sir. That's if and only when the law finds me to have contravened the law in any way. That's when the law can treat me like a criminal. Have we in any way treated you like a criminal? Or disrespected you, sir? Look at the way you're driving me out. Sir, please, why don't you allow him ride in my car instead? You can ask him whatever questions you want to ask him, please. All right. Simply put, one of us have to come with him in the same car. Okay, all right. No problem. Let's go. Let's go. No, I'm not moving out of this house. Look, whoever wants to take my life has to come here and do it. Brianna, look, you can't be nonchalant in a matter that concerns your own life. Yes, Brianna, please. Let's move you out of this place. These people who are after you, they know where you live. And you greatly put Bob, who loves you, in great distress. 
for refusing to move. If they Please. really want to kill me, they will trace me wherever I am. I can't run. All right, all right, Brianna, listen. I'll fly you abroad, all right? Anywhere, uh, America, Europe, you name it. And I'll be coming to see you every month until this whole thing is over, please. Oh. Brianna, if this heart, this heart which I carry right now, if it means anything to you, then you'll do as I say and stay alive and give this heart someone to love. I'll relocate if, if that's what you want. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, but wait. On one condition. You have become a part of my life now. And so you must keep your promise. I have to see you at least once every Brianna. month. All right, all right. Brianna, anything you say, okay? Anything. Come here. Thank you. Yeah, officer. I'm just at the brink of flying her abroad for safety. But... You know how risky last minutes are. I don't want anything to go wrong now that she's at the brink of safety. That's true. Okay? Yeah. Good. Now, this is what I want. I want you to detail your men on a 24-hour surveillance of her house. Okay? okay? Yeah. Let them follow her anywhere she goes. I repeat, officer, let them follow her everywhere. And please, don't tell anybody about this. Only the men on duty. Okay. Good. Uh, I promise to reward you and the police force via cash donations, uh, uniforms, boots, etc. Okay? We do our job. I promise you that. Can I count on you? <laughs> well, you count on the police force of this country, which I proudly represent. Thank you, officer. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank okay. you. Good. Evening. Down. 
I care about you, Mom. I want you to take it easy with yourself. It's not your fault that they're after her. I'll have to go. Stop her, but she just kept coming. Bob, I want you to get the police off my track and Albert's track. We're not the ones trying to kill your girlfriend. Why don't you look for the people who are trying to? As much as I hate Brianna, I'm not trying to take her life. But for Pete's sake, why would I want to kill your girlfriend? For your love, money, or what? You don't mean shit to me, and as a matter of fact, you never really did. Kate, Sorry. call security. No. No, no, wait. You don't have to. Well, I've told you what I came here for. The next time you make the police harass any of us over you and Brianna, I'll show you the real meaning of enmity. Rubbish. Brianna, listen, it's the only way to protect you, since you won't sleep in my house. Oh, Bob, you can't sleep here. You cannot sleep in this house. Look, I won't be comfortable, okay? I, I still feel Ken's presence all over the place. I'll feel guilty, you know, more like cheating on him. All right, all right, all right. We don't have to sleep on the same bed, okay? Or in your room. You, you can sleep in your room and I'll be fine here, all right? But, but Brianna, I need to be here to protect you. Please. Sticking around the house. I'll only go when you're happy again. Go? Go where? You're supposed to be going to work, not going anywhere else. Brianna, I'm dead. You keep forgetting. But I can't go now. I'll go only when you're safe and truly happy again. Ken, stop saying that. You're not dead. Okay, you're not. Just just stop, please. Don't don't say that. You're not dead. Stop it. Please. Just no, don't say that. Okay, please, just stop. Ken. Ken, just wait. Stop. Don't. Don't go.
go straight to the point, Angela. Take a good look at this harmless young lady here. And tell me why you think she deserves to die. Wait, Bob. Before Angela says anything, let me answer you emphatically that neither Angela nor I has done or would do anything to jeopardize or harm Brianna here. So what are you talking about? Bob, I'm happy with Albert. Yes, I know I wasn't a good girl when I was with you. And it was always about your money. And I wasn't even there when you were sick. But that was because I never really loved you. Bob, right now, and I found love with Albert. We were happy together, so why do you think I'll bother myself over you and Brianna's life? Call this crap and deny us and say the truth, Angela. Say the truth. Truth? What truth are you talking about? You are a snake, and you know I never liked you. You know that. Enough. Enough. We didn't come here to quarrel, or did we? You know, I have this strong feeling that it's not Angela that's trying to kill me. Then who, my dear? It is Angela, no one else. She can deny all she wants, but all fingers point in her direction. It is her, it is Angela, and no one else. Hello? My God. All right, all right, all right, fine, fine. I'm coming to the station right now. Look, I said I'm coming to the station right now. What happened? The police just arrested a man trying to climb the fence into your compound. What? And they said they are taking him in for interrogation. Sorry, people, we, we have to go. Sorry, um, I'll go to the office. I have an urgent email to send. I'll join you at the station. Okay. Okay, oh, oh, all right. So you see, it was your idea to honor the invitation. You see what a waste of time it has been. Going on? Can you just talk to me? Please, I'll explain later. When I get to the house, please just, just take the car and go. Okay. you will try to run. Don't you confess to the police? Yes. Kate. Kate. So you were the snake that I ate and dined with, Kate. Bob. Contrary to what I told to me, it was not my greed for your money that made me want Brianna dead. 
it was my love for you. I have secretly loved you. Deeply and violently in my heart. Since the very first day you employed me to work for you. But you being my boss. I could not make my feelings known to you. I suffered when you were sick. I died many times. When it seems you are about to die. I watched you love Angela and I suffered in my heart. I only told Tony it was your money because I only wanted him to work for me. I only used him. He's going to move Brianna into another house. And this time, you must not fail me or I'll kick you back into the streets where I found you. Back into your life of selling cheap wraps of Indian hemp and forever running from the police. I'm sorry, Katie. I won't fail again. Don't you have any ambition? Or do you want him to marry her? And I'll lose everything in the company to her. A position I've toyed for. He would give everything he would have given to me to her. I'm sorry, Katie. At first, I thought Angela was my problem. I tried to discourage her from the relationship. But nature took care of that for me. And now it's Brianna. And he's loving her so, so deeply. At the rate he's going, he will will the whole company to her. But the good thing is that he suspects Angela and her new boyfriend. So move now and kill her while all fingers still points in Angela's direction. I house you. I feed you. I sleep with you. Is there anything I don't do for you? No, Katie. Then do this one thing for me. Sitting room, watching TV. Tony, I want you out of my house first thing tomorrow morning. And I don't want you to sleep in my bed this night. Please go to the guest room. Now, Katie, you know it's not my fault. Some gentleman just appeared at the scene. Please go to the guest room and sleep, Tony. Tomorrow morning, I want you out of my house and back into the streets where you came from. You should even consider yourself lucky I didn't throw you out this night. What do you want, Tony? I've come to beg you. Please, let me try a little more. I'll be ready for work in about 30 minutes time. And I expect you'll be out of my house before then. Or else I'll call the police and tell them that you're an intruder. But Brianna still needs to be taken care of. You still need me. Tony, there are 1,001 muscle men in this city. And I could get any of them to do the job for me. Since you can't do it. I love you both. I suffered. When you got well and began to love Brianna. The only thing I could think of was to kill her. Please, let me go. I'll catch a flight and I'll leave the country. 
I'll leave you and Brian alone. I'll never come back. Still, still, it's not right. It's not. Loving me does not give you the right to take another person's life. You should have found other means of dealing with it. I know. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. arrested man to kill you and she has just been arrested herself while trying to flee the country safe now. Alright, you're okay. They will prosecute her for attempted murder and other things. I already sent them a text message apologizing.
Ken is gone. He's not here anymore. Papa, I know what I'm saying. I can't feel him anymore. You know, he came in my dreams and he said to me, I will go on when you're safe. Ken was a good man. Very good man. And may his good and gentle soul rest in peace. Amen. Amen. And may his heart, which I carry right now, help me to love you every day of my life. My heart is beating very fast again. No. My heart is beating faster. And that's because our hearts are speaking to each other. Words of love. We will always love you. <laughs> 